Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a problem using one-dimensional kinematics for free fall. And in this video, we're gonna calculate the height through which an object falls if we know the time it takes for the object to fall. And here's the problem that we have. Billy standing at the edge of a lake, at the edge of a cliff, that overlooks the lake, he picks up the rock, drops it straight down. It takes 2.75 seconds for the rock to reach the water. We wanna know what is the height of the cliff or from what height is the rock dropped. Okay, so for free fall, I like to draw a simple diagram. Here's my cliff. This is the height from which the ball is going to be dropped. I like to draw the object. It's not a ball, it's a rock, but this is the object. And because we're told that the cliff is 2.75 seconds tall, or it takes 2.75 seconds for the object to reach the bottom, I like to just draw that in like that. Now, you don't always have to do this, but I like to put an XY coordinate system in. The ball is falling straight down free fall. This means no change in position in the X direction, but it is falling in the negative direction. So I want to keep in mind that my change in position my velocity and my acceleration are all going to be in the negative direction because it's falling down, okay? And down in the y direction is usually considered negative. Now, I drew my diagram. The next thing I like to do before I get out my kinematic equation is to write down all five variables that are in the kinematic equation. That's the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, the time. Now I can fill in what I know and what I don't know. We're only given one thing explicitly that tells us that the time it takes for the object to fall is 2.75 seconds. So I write that down. Now, if this is free fall, you're dropping the object because you're probably holding it in your hand and dropping it. The initial velocity is zero meters per second. And because it's free fall, the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, G, which I have A for acceleration, but it's a special kind of acceleration. And that's 9.81 meters per second for free fall. That's a constant on earth. Things have an acceleration when they fall through for free fall. 9.81 meters per second squared. Now it is falling in the negative direction. The acceleration vector points in the negative direction. So I put a negative sign here. It's important to keep your negative and your positive sign straight because you want to have the change in position be negative. Also, we're not given the final velocity. We're looking for the change in position. So therefore, we know what we know and what we don't know now, okay? So we drew a diagram. We wrote down all five variables. We filled in the information. And now we can take that to the next slide and get out our kinematic equation, look for the kinematic equation we're gonna use. Once again, for kinematics, you'll notice you're given three variables, you're asked to solve for a fourth. Each of the equation has four variables in it. If you know three of the variables, then you can solve for the fourth. Now, we're solving for the change in position. You'll notice right away that this equation doesn't have change in position in it, so we cannot use it. Now, all the others do have change in position. Change in position, change in position, change in position. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you'll notice that this equation and this equation have the final velocity. We don't know the final velocity. So therefore, we cannot use this equation and we cannot use this equation. Now, let's just check this one because hopefully this will work out. The change in position, we, well, that's what we're looking for. We need to know the other three variables, the initial velocity we know, the acceleration we know, and the time we know. So this is our equation. We're going to take this equation to the next slide, information diagram. And we can just simply fill in the information now because we're looking for the change in position and this equation is solved for the change in position. Now, once again, you should notice that uh, the initial velocity is zero. This is the initial velocity times the time. If the initial velocity is zero and the initial velocity times the time is also zero and this term comes to zero. And therefore this simplifies to that the change in position or the distance through which the object falls is equal to one half at squared. Okay, this is a good equation to keep in mind. It's kind of a subset of this equation for free fall because generally the initial velocity is zero and the position, change in position is just one half at squared. Now we can simply plug the values in. Change in position is one half 0 0.5 times minus 9.81. Remember the acceleration is negative times 2.75 seconds squared. And you get that the change in position is minus 31 meters. Okay, yes, it's true. The cliff is 37.1 meters tall, 37.1 meters high. We're asked to find the change in position. It's falling in a negative direction. So really you need to have a negative sign here in front of your answer. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, we drew a diagram. We wrote down our variables. We filled in what we know, we don't know. We chose the right equation. We simplified it, plugged the values in, got the answer with the correct sign, okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Give me a nice thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. And also, 
Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.